got killed for the 47th time, so uh, it was a bit arduous, but uh, I had a good crew and uh, good writers, and I mean, you're, you, you can only be as good as the people you're working with, and uh, I had some good folks around me, so it was a fortunate day. It's hard to shoot a bunch of stuff in one day, but I think we pulled it off. I think it's going to be good. I read the script, and I thought it was good, and um, I like working with young filmmakers, and I think that... Uh, you, you know, if you turn down stuff, you never know what you're going to walk away from. If I, a lot of people told me not to do Reservoir Dogs because it was a small film with a first-time director, and if I hadn't said no, you know, I wouldn't even have a career. <laughs> well, I've made about 160 pictures, and uh, I think the independent ones were the most fun because you have a lot more creative control. It's more of a uh, collaboration. I think that the uh, independent films are a little bit more of a, a creative environment. I think it's a little bit more, everybody really wants to make something good and there's no recipe. But if you're working on a big picture sometimes, it's more of a constrained kind of a situation. I mean, it's, it's hard to say. I, mean, I think they're both good in their own way. It just depends. Depends on your director. A lot. Uh, he's patient and uh, I had a good time with him. I look forward to working with him again. If it wasn't for independent films, there would be no Hollywood, all right? Because I think they're running out of story ideas and I think that uh, somebody like me, uh, you know, it's a good thing they have them because uh, it keeps me employed. I want to say that I worked with a great bunch of people today and that um, God bless everybody that was here today. They supported me well and I was lucky. PG-13? You don't know me. You can't say, you don't, what's the line? You don't know me, keep my name out of your mouth. You don't know me, keep my name out of your mouth. Not anybody gonna bet on the Lakers. The Lakers, that's right. If Jack Nicholson likes the Lakers, you bet on them. That's all, they all go out there. I think Joshua Tree to me is about what the tree is about. Joshua Tree, uh, I'm doing my research, is um, it's a religious tree, it's a tree uh, uh, about, uh, you know, redemption, and we all need that. Uh, and we all need, when we come back, uh, to get that another shot, um, you know, to prove ourselves again. And that's what happens in this movie with uh, the main character, Ray. Uh, he, he, he redeems himself, and um, he goes through a whole change, and then he ends up looking for the love of his life, who is out with a Josh. Well, the script was great, and it was real fast. Uh, it was... Uh, it was like Quentin, you know, it was like Tarantino, it just moved. And um, it was one of those scripts where uh, I, I, I actually read beginning to end and, you know, didn't take a break. So to me, reading the script is like watching the film. I was very uh, anxious to see what happens to the main character. Jeff and Mob! Jeff! They don't have anything, okay? They don't have anything! They have a tape, man! It's a fucking tape with my voice talking to Dimitri! Hey, Ruff, how do you like that? Huh? Oh, they're Ruffy. bluffing! Right, right! Listen, listen, oh, listen! Yeah. Jeff, listen, listen, listen! If they had something, if they had something solid, don't you think you would've been arrested? No. No. You know why? Because they said they won't put me in because Vasily has too many guys in there already. Ah. Yeah, and they'll fucking cut my throat. That's bullshit. Bullshit? That's bullshit. Oh. Bullshit. Listen, listen, it's either an illegal wiretap, which these idiots do all the time, or they don't have anything that will stick. Jeff. Jeff, please. Let's take a second here. Let's take a second. Breathe. Relax. Let's take a moment. Okay, let me make a few phone calls, see what's going on. And I'll call you tonight. No, listen, you're going to make some phone calls because you know why? They offered me witness protection. You know what that means? My family, we got to go away. 
Okay? Not you, not your family. Me! My family! So yeah, you make a few phone calls. Rob. About eight years ago, when I first first ran into Emilio Rosso, um, it was in uh, in Trafalgar Square in in uh, in London, and uh, he was on one of those double decker buses, and I was about to be hit by the bus, and he yelled at me from the top. He goes, "Hey, Scarface! Hey, um, uh, get out of the way!" Get, you know, and I'm like. Holy, you just saved my life. And he goes, have I got a plan for you? I know my character, uh, Campbell, um, makes a deal with the devil, sort of gets involved with people he should not get involved with, Russians. <laughs> and um, and, it's, and, it, and, and it's, it's because of his friend. His friend pulls him into this, this deal, this one-time thing, and... Uh, promises me that nothing's going to happen, that I can get in and out. And of course, it's always stickier and messier, and you, and you always end up owing. And um, it's very, very, very well written and very, again, very challenging, very fun to play that. <laughs> take place in uh, Los Angeles or New York and the main guy basically uh, got contract as a political hitman and what we see in the movie is that his conscience basically got so close to him so he doesn't want to do it anymore and he think about the woman he lost and he starts searching for her but in the meanwhile hey what sorry this is uh, this movie business they love to talk so basically what happened is after he basically discovered his conscious by going to New York and see this woman and he think he's like the old woman, the old lady he had and flashbacks start coming up for the main character and since then he has uh, dreams and flashback over this woman. Yeah. 